Welcome back to the third part of lecture five. In this part, we will introduce a problem called branching process problem, and then analyze its behavior. But before that, let us introduce a new notation, which reads expected of x given y, where x and y are both random variables. So this new notation, or this expression, is defined as a certain random variable. The value of this random variable is equal to expected of x given the event y is equal to j when y is equal to j. So you can think of this as a function of y. If I tell you y is equal to 1, then this expression will have the value expected of x given y is equal to 1. And if y is equal to 2, then this expression will give us a value of expected of x given y is equal to 2. So let's take a look of a following example. So we have seen this example before. Suppose that we are rolling a fair die two times. We let x1 to be the result of the first row and x to be the result or the sum of the two results. So we have what we have shown before is when x1 is equal to 1, then the expected of the total sum given x1 is equal to 1 will be equal to 1 plus 3.5. And similarly, when x1 is equal to 2, we get the expected value of x given x1 is equal to 2 will be 2 plus 3.5. So in general, expected of x given x1, we can write it as x1 plus 3.5. So we see that this expected value is a function of x1. And by giving different outcomes, this expected value will change. So this is a random variable. Okay, based on this new notation, then we can have the following theorem. So for random variables x and y, expected of x is equal to the summation of expected of x given y is equal to j weighted by the probability of y is equal to j. So this is actually nothing special. This is just the conditional expectation formula. So we see that y is equal to j are events and for different value of j, it represents disjoint events spanning the whole sample space. So, so in that case, by the conditional expectation formula, we get this theorem. Now, if, I, if we look at this summation, this is actually representing the expected value of something. So what is the expected value of, of what thing? Okay, so here, actually, we can simplify this or write it compactly as the expected value of this function, expected x given y. So this is a random variable. The expected value of this random variable is exactly this formula. And this formula, as we have shown before, it is expected of x, so this is it. Okay, now let us take a look of what is meant by the branching process problem. So here, suppose that we have a certain infected machine, M. So M is now infected with some computer virus. Now, because M is infected in our setting, it will send out virus program to some other machines. So let's say it will send out the virus program to N new machines that we have not seen before. Although the virus program is sent to these machines, it doesn't mean that these machines will be infected. So in particular, we assume that each of these machines will be infected independently with probability P. So the machine M will send out virus program to M machines. Some of them will be infected, and then the chance is P. Now, if a machine is now infected due to this one, it will further repeat the process and send a virus program to N new other machines. And this will go on and so forth, so on and so forth. So this is a so, so this is some 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 example. So suppose that we have this machine M, and then now it is infected with a certain virus. Because of this, it will send out programs to try to infect some other machines, the end of them. But not all of them will be infected. 
So let's say this one is infected and this one is infected. So for all the infected machines, it will repeat the same thing. So this one will send out programs to end new machines, and then this one will also send programs to end new machines. We assume that these machines do not overlap. Okay, so every time when we send out a program to a machine, so these machines are not seen before, not overlapping. Okay, then what is the problem? The problem is we let Y to be the number of infected machines eventually. So sometimes Y could be 1, very small. Let's say M tries to infect the machines, but then none of them will get infected. So sometimes Y could be 1, Y could be 2, Y could be any number. So there are different probability for Y to be of different values. So we want to find out what is the expected value of Y. Now to compute this expected value, then let us try to simplify this by breaking it down. So we define y of j to be the number of infected machines at level j. So what is meant by level? Okay, so we assume that m is at level 0. So those machines that are infected by m will be at level 1. And then level 1 machines will infect other machines. They will be on level 2 and so on and so forth. So so we are trying to separate the machines into levels. So some machines that are infected will be at level 0, some machines at level 1, some machines at level 2, and so on and so forth. So we assume that M is at level 0. So in such a case, Y0 is equal to 1. And on the other hand, we can see that big Y can be expressed as Y0 plus Y1 plus Y2 plus Y3 and so on and so forth. So by linearity of expectation, expected of y can be written as expected of y0, which is 1, plus expected of y1, plus expected of y2, and so on and so forth. We actually know what is expected of y1, because there are n machines at level 1, and each one will be infected with probability p independently. So the expected value of y1 will be exactly n times p. But how about the other expected value? So intuitively, there are NP machines infected at level 1. So it seems like there will be NP times NP machines infected at level 2. Yeah, because each machine will further infect roughly NP machines. But unfortunately, this number NP may not be uh, an integer. So if it is not an integer, then, then, then it may not be reasonable to talk about, oh, how can 0 0.3 machines infect some other machines? So to make it more rigorous, we need to have a way to show what is the value of expected of y2 and what is the value of expected of y3 and so on and so forth. So here is what we are going to do. So in particular, we want to find out what is expected of yj. So using our formula, the conditional expectation formula, expected of yj can be expressed as oh this one there's a notation problem okay so this is this should be little k okay the summation of all the possible cases that yj minus 1 can take on so yj minus 1 is equal to k multiplied by the probability that yj minus 1 is equal to k so this is what we have and somehow this expected value this time Suppose that I tell you yj minus 1 is equal to k. Then what is the expected value of yj? Then in this case, because they are exactly k, which is an integer, k machines infected in the previous level, yj, this level j minus 1. So in that sense, this expected value, this time we can confidently write down as k times mp. And the remaining part, we keep it unchanged. Now, n times p will be independent of this summation. This summation should be k, okay, summation of k. So mp will be moved outside, so we have the summation of the other terms left. So this is summation of k, this term is k, okay, of k times probability of yj minus 1 equal to k. So this is no, nothing special. This is just the expected value of yj minus 1. So what does that mean? It means that 
expected of yj can be expressed as n times p times the previous term, the previous expected value, expected of yj minus 1. So this confirms with our intuition. So if we get back to the original, original equation, expected of y is equal to this one, and because we know that expected of y1 is np, so expected of y2 will be np squared. Now because we know that this is np squared, we know that expected of y3 will be np cubed, and so on and so forth. So if we add things up together, we will see that expected of y will be equal to 1 divided by 1 minus np if np is strictly less than 1. And then on the other hand, if it is greater than or equal to 1, then each of these terms will be greater than or equal to 1. So that infinite terms summing, so it will be infinity. So that means that as long as the virus is not that strong, as long as the chance that a certain machine and a certain machine receiving a virus program will be infected with probability less than, strictly less than, wonderful n, then we are safe. So in that case, the total number of machines that will be infected on average will be bounded. But on the other hand, if the virus is strong, so that the probability p is larger than 1 over n, then in that case, the, 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 the infection process will be uncontrollable, so that there will be infinite number of machines infected. That's all for the third part of lecture 5. Thank you.